So this week, we've been, as always, thinking about our entire self, but exploring how we use our arms. So if you have a cup of coffee in your hand, you will need to put it down, or a bottle, or a mug, because I would like you to cross your arms. And notice how you're doing that. Can you find another way of crossing your arms? Can you find another way? How many different ways? Now, what we think of as different is quite curious because it can be a small difference and yet still different. And you're being very creative. That's great. So, you know, the most common way people cross their arms is some behind the back. Great. Is like this. But there's actually how many variations of this might there be if you just stay in front of yourself for a moment. So think of the more traditional crossing of your arms, you know, how people stand, you know, they're having a conversation. Some people say it's about self-protection or whatever. It could be but it could be, I'm cold. <laughs> um, so what's another way? How many different ways can you do this? There's about, there's four, if you think of this, this traditional kind of way of crossing. There's four variations. So you can have one arm over the top and tuck the hand in. Do the reverse of that. Starts getting... I can't think, feel myself and talk at the same time, think at the same time. Okay, so there's, there's different ways. Have you found four different ways? Which one feels more like you? So each subtle difference in how you cross your arms engages a whole background organization that's a little different, yeah? So somebody already has tried, what about behind your back? How would you cross your arms behind your back? So we've got holding the elbows. And if you're sitting, it might be a little different to what, so standing, I'd probably do this. And that is my preferred rather than that. Okay, but you can cross your arms like that. Hands, arms, whatever you think of. I mean, when we think of crossing our arms in front of ourselves, they literally are crossed. But behind us, it can be, you know, a little bit different. What difference does it make to your breathing where you have your arms or how you're organizing your arms? What difference does it make through your shoulder girdle, the position of your shoulder blades on your... So keep changing. So once you've found one, find another. What difference does it make to your shoulder blades and how they sit on your... How they relate? are in relationship to your ribs because every direction that I move my arm in there's a changing relationship if it's not being held there's a changing relationship so if I br if we bring the arm back you feel how your shoulder blade comes a little closer to your spine and does it come closer to your spine at one end or both end so we this is often called the inferior angle, inferior because it's lower than the upper one. And this is the superior angle that's medial, that's more towards the midline. So when we move, when we move our shoulder blade, or when you move your shoulder blade, what are you noticing? Can, is it the bottom angle that's moving towards the spine? Is it the top angle that's moving towards the spine? 
or is it both? Or maybe it's one first and then the other. So now could you put your hands, to, hands together behind you? And notice for most people, it's a pity I need to be standing in the other end of the room. Most people, their fingers will be pointing downwards. Yeah? Can you turn your hands so that your fingers point upwards? But don't do it at the expense of your own comfort. Just find out how easy it is it for you right now to move in that direction. And even more importantly, what's happening through yourself? Your shoulder blades, your clavicles, your sternum, your breathing. So often we clap, you know, in the front of ourselves. Can you clap at the back of yourself? And when you clap at the back of yourself, so for most of us, it's easier to have our fingers pointed downwards. And that's still in, not outside the range, but anything, anything that's behind our back. <laughs> uh -huh. So Lockie's clapping his heels. Can you clap your fingers? Yeah. <laughs> anything that's behind us that maybe you could turn around, Lockie. Could you turn around and it's within the range of human ability, but because we don't, most of our functions in daily life are in front of ourselves and we can see what we're doing. We don't have this experience behind us. We haven't used it. It's not familiar. And so often it's not freely available to us. So, Point your hands downwards, your fingers downwards, and just see how well your one hand meets with the other. And then see, can you move your hands a little right and a little left? So probably your hands will be most comfortable. We'll find out what, find out what height your hands are comfortable behind you. So it could be lower down on your sacrum. It could be more at your waist level. So move your hands a little left and a little right, sensing into yourself what you feel happening to accommodate that. Are you holding your head stiffly in space? Does that help? Try it. Fix your head. So you're really concentrating on your, just on your hands and feel the difference that makes. And then let that go as much as you're able to and let your head be as free to respond and see what difference that makes to the quality of the movement or the ease of the movement of your hands moving right wood and left wood. Mm -hmm. Okay, rest a moment. And bring your hands behind you again. And find, come back to this idea of turning your hands upwards. But it's the idea, it's a direction. And feel what, take the time to feel what needs to happen. How does that, so don't necessarily hold it, come out of it, turn your hands around. Turn your fingers towards yourself. So start with your hands pointing downwards. Fingers in the direction of your coccyx. And then slowly begin to turn your hands. It's almost impossible to turn your fingers outwards and come up. You feel that. But what, how can you organize yourself to turn your fingers towards yourself, fingertips towards yourself, and how quickly do your heels of your hands separate? 
How quickly does your attention get stuck on what you're trying to do with your hands rather than what's happening with the shape of your spine, your sternum? Does it help if you move your whole torso forwards or backwards? Is it easier if you round your back or create an arch in your back? So what we're looking at is how can you organize yourself and what shapes do we make, can we make, that make this organization a little bit easier to find? And if you notice that moment where you stop your breath and just go back a little bit away from that and come back towards it, you might notice what you lose out of your image or where you're stiffening yourself, holding yourself in a way that doesn't, isn't congruent with the intention of turning your fingers upwards. Okay, rest a moment in sitting. I remember watching um, the Olympic Games and the swimmers and how they used to, bef before they do a race, if you've if seen them, and I, ca I can't do what they do, <laughs> how the, the configurations they make with their arms is pretty amazing. But what you also see is the subtle movement that's happening through their torso in order to take their arms in that direction. Contortion. Yes. Houdini and how they, well, they often they dislocate their shoulders in order to do certain things, which we don't want to do today. So bring your, come back to sitting, bring your hands behind you again and explore with your fingers pointing downwards. Explore moving them, start with them low down and move your, keeping your palms, the heels of your hands together and the fingertips of your finger, the pads of your fingers together. Move your hands left and right. And listen to how your two shoulders cooperate. Do you feel any side bending in your ribs? Do you allow one elbow to bend or the other elbow to bend? So if you had a back pocket, on your pants. Could you slide your hands into your back pocket on the left side and on the right side? And feel when you do that, or notice when you do that, do you sense more turning through either your forearm, your wrists? When does one shoulder, if you're going to your left pocket, do you feel how your right shoulder needs to lower? And does it help if your left shoulder lifts? In other words, the two sides of you are supporting the action of where your hands are going. Now move your hands a little higher and move them right and left. And notice, can you bring your hands around to the side of you, around near your waist on one side and your waist on the other side? And then try once more, turning your hands towards yourself, having your fingers point in the direction of your head. Just a little, just maybe if you keep sensing what's happening in your clavicles, your sternum, the ribs at the your ribs at the front 
and your ribs at the back. Not trying to get there, but feeling whether as you begin to move in that direction, the rest of you cooperates with that. Moves in a way, organizes in a way that assists your intention or resists your intention. Okay, please leave it. Lie on your back. Notice what you sense in your lying this morning. How your right shoulder blade relates to the floor. Could you trace out in your mind's eye the shape of the contact of your right shoulder blade in the floor? What's the size? of the area of contact? Do you feel it lower down, more towards the bottom angle of your shoulder blade? Or higher up, more near your shoulder joint? And is it more to the, uh, away from your spine that you make contact or closer to your spine? And then compare that to how your left shoulder blade lies. And is there something in your way of, of the way each of your shoulder blades is lying on the floor? that has something to do with how you've organized your arms, either the direction of your palms, the turn in your forearms, and the angle of your upper arm from your torso. Let your attention wander along the length of your spine, listening to the places that are lifted away from the floor, <laughs> floor and the places that you feel are more in contact, lean against the floor, where you more clearly feel that contact, all the way from your coccyx to your head, from your head back down to your coccyx, And take a moment to bring your attention to the way your pelvis is lying. Whether you feel the shape and size of the contact of your right buttock with the floor, your left buttock with the floor. How do they compare? Do you feel you lean, the leaning place on one buttock is closer to your sit bone or the top of your leg than the other side? And is the contact more towards your sacrum, the middle of you, or is it more clearly you feel on one side it's more towards the side of your pelvis? And is the contact 
So for some people, the contact might feel as if it's lower down in the direction of the sacrum or the hip, the buttocks behind the hip joints because your hip joints aren't actually lying on the floor right now. And for others, it feels higher up, more towards the rim of the pel your pelvis. Gently roll your head a little to the left and to the right. And how do you, do you choose to roll your head in a way that you'd like somebody else to roll it? What's the speed you choose? The distance. Can you find a range of movement where nothing stands out? You could direct your attention to something, but it feels so light and easy and simple that nothing draws your attention necessarily, no sensation. That even the changing contact between the back of your head and the floor is smooth and continuous. And then rest. Please bend your knees, stand your feet. Notice how do you choose to bend your knees this morning? And how do you choose to organize your feet? What's the distance between them? The distance between each foot and your buttocks. The distance of each foot from an imaginary line that's extended down through you from you as a, like an extension of your spine, extension of your midline. Is one foot closer to that midline, imaginary extension of that line? one foot further away. Please interlace your fingers. You can interlace them habitually. Very slowly, can you bring your interlaced hands in the direction of the floor above your head? But imagine that you wanted to take a minute to get there. So bring them back down. Those of you who are there already, bring them back down. So most people can rest their hands more or less comfortably on their abdomen. So start there or somewhere on your ribs and take at least 30 seconds to bring your arms overhead. And notice where you feel the sensations of movement. Do you feel your forearms turning? Do your elbows, how do your elbows bend or straighten? And what's happening in your shoulder joint between your upper arm and your shoulder blade? And can you sense the changing contact of your shoulder blade with your ribs or the floor? What do you do with your eyes, your tongue? And as you're traveling along this path, when's the first moment that you notice that the quality changes, that there's an increase in the resistance or a shift in the smoothness of the movement? Or the movement, your movement gets a little thicker.
and bring your arms down again. So the learning is in the movement or in the journey, not the destination. And if you follow with your attention the journey, the process, your process of moving, you'll discover, you have the opportunity to discover how you're moving and to begin to do something differently that makes a difference if you know what you're doing before you try to carry out what you want to do when you may not have the means or the organization to do that yet. So slowly, you can choose the slowness this time, slowly bring your arms, interlaced hands, overhead, in the direction above your head. If they don't go to the floor comfortably, then don't put them on the floor. But as your arms begin to go up in the direction of the floor above your head, also think that you want to take the palms of your hands further away from your head so that your arms unbend to the degree that's comfortable, but your hands stay interlaced. Your palms are turned towards the top of your head. Your palms are towards, that means your hair is near your hands. So bring your palms to rest on the top of your head and feel how you need to bend your elbows to do that. And maybe you notice something happening in your shoulder blades, shoulder joints, clavicles, and then gently lengthen them away from the top of your head. So the distance between your hands and your head increases. Find the comfortable distance for you now where you feel like you could stay there a little while. We're not going to. And in that, with that distance, begin to move your hands, your arms, yourself a little rightward and a little leftward. So you don't have to, now you don't have to maintain that distance between your hands and your head, but you're mo thinking of moving, your, your arms are making a shape and you're moving that shape rightward, your knees are bent and your feet are standing, you're moving that shape rightward and leftward and sensing what happens through the length of each arm Maybe one arm lengthens a little bit more. Maybe one arm bends a little more. Okay. Please bring your arms down. Lengthen them by your sides. So, you know, we use the word lengthen a lot. But our bones don't actually lengthen. But when we unbend something, our limb, if we unbend a leg or we unbend an arm, in our self-image, the arm is longer when it's unbent and shorter when it's bended or bending. Please just bend your right leg, stand your right foot, interlace your fingers non-habitually, Bring them 
towards the floor above your head where it's possible without making any sort of effort. And then from there, can you begin to move your arms to the left, but begin by using your right leg on the floor so that you roll a little bit. But the rolling is in order to lengthen your arms to the left. So it's not to roll onto your left side as such, but it's to assist you to find a way of using yourself that might bring your arms as they lie close to the floor or wherever is comfortable above your head towards the left and come back and do it again. Explore it again many times. And notice as you roll, do your arms tend to straighten a little more, unbend a little? So don't push your arms to straighten, but listen to see if you can find that connection. Feel that for yourself, that the arms tend to lengthen as you roll to the left. And if you're rolling a long way uh, onto your left side, gradually, once you get the feel of your arms lengthening, see if you need to. And feel if your arms could lower a little closer to the floor. And how does that influence your ability to slide your arms to the left? And what are you doing with your head? So keep in mind this idea of unbending your arms, that the rolling, it's possible that the rolling could help your arms straighten more. But it's not about pushing them to straighten, but finding out if you can sense that connection. Even the first approximation. So that means the distance between your head and the palms of your hands would increase. Your palms would be moving away from the top of your head as you roll. Next time you come back to your back, bring your arms down, lengthen your leg and take a pause. And notice how you sense yourself. Please bend your left leg, change the interlacing of your fingers, so you're standing your left foot, bring your arms slowly above your head. As they come above your head, can you track the relationship, the distance between your hands and you, and the shape of your arms, and the distance of the palms of your hands from the top of your head? Have your arms comfortably extended above your head and begin to explore moving your arms to the right with the help of your left leg, rolling your pelvis and feeling how that roll passes through you, through your spine, your ribs, to your shoulder girdle, and you're a 
ability or your ease of lengthening your arms overhead. So you don't have to keep the heels of your hands together. You're, you're making this soft loop or soft shape with your arms that changes. And if you allow your wrists to bend a little more, then your palms don't need your hands, palms of your hands don't need to touch. What's the change? Can you follow the changing relationship of your left shoulder blade with your ribs on the left side and your ribs with the, your shoulder blade on the right side? And is your head being involved passively? You find yourself actively turning your head. So as you move your hands on the floor or close to the floor, to the right, your left arm comes closer to the floor. Your right arm might come a little further away from the floor. <laughs> yes. As you move your arms to the left and roll yourself, you may find your right arm, sorry, right, <laughs> right. You might find your right arm coming more in contact with the floor and your left arm coming away from the floor. Which arm? Do you feel a change in the ease of straightening? The, your right arm or your left arm as you roll to the right? If you can, keep your left knee pointing towards the ceiling. And how are you breathing as you're doing this? Can you sense your length of your inhalation and the length of your exhalation? Maybe it would help to hum. Maybe it would interfere. Try it. Maybe it would help to smile. Or be ready to smile. It's not so much about the smiling, but it's having, the, having no unnecessary work in your face that you'd feel like you have to shift in order to smile or change in order to smile. Okay, please leave it. Rest on your back. Bring your arms down. Please bend your right knee, stand your right foot, interlace your hands, just know which way you're doing them, which way you're interlacing, habitual or non-habitual. Bring your arms above your head towards the floor and this time slowly turn your palms away from the top of your head. So notice where do you choose to do that? Do you do that as soon as I say it, wherever your hands are? Or do you find where in that motion is the easiest place to rotate? And then keeping your arms at that com a comfortable place uh, above the, in the direction of the floor above your head, begin to, and keeping your palms away, directed away from the top of your head, could you begin to move your hands like this to the left? They know it, no, begin to notice, how is it different? 
Is this easier for you or a little more difficult for you? Uh -huh. So you keep the palms turned away. So now it's the back of your hands that are facing your head. And use your right leg, your right foot on the floor, to roll you to the left. Feeling, finding, is it possible to lengthen your arms a little? Unbend your elbows as they slide. So it's not just in the direction of away from the top of your head. It's to the left of you. So it can both happen simultaneously. Maybe you start, you emphasize moving away from your head and then you start sliding. What would, be, what would it be like to sli slide first and then lengthen your arms away from your head? As you roll yourself and the rolling for most people will make it a little easier to lengthen their arms. So you, there's both the changing, the softening of the thorax in contact with the floor, but there's also a component of an upward movement from your right foot to your left arm. And where are you looking? Would it make any difference if you were to begin to look in the direction of your hands as they're leftward somewhere of you? Okay. Pause. Bring your arms down. Lengthen your leg for a moment. And again, sense yourself. Each pause is an opportunity to listen to yourself, to notice if there's the movement you've just done, influence, has left an influence, left a trace. You know, every tide of the ocean is different, washes in different things, leaves different things on the shore. Every movement that we do leaves its trace, but often our attention is so directed to what we're doing in life and the needs of life that we, it goes by unnoticed. So when you're learning and listening to yourself, this is such an opportunity to take the time to notice. Please bend your other leg and stand your foot. Interlace, change the interlacing of your hands. And bring them on the floor above your head in that direction. And begin to find out uh, when you turn the palms of your hands away from the top of your head. And then as you take your arms and hands and self, particularly your hands, your hands are moving in space, to the right of you, find out how you can use yourself in order to assist the lengthening of your arms away from the top of your head while the palms stay facing away. Feel how your right side contacts the floor, how your right arm lengthens. So it's not just about the rolling, but your rolling in order to assist your arms to lengthen, assist you to find the organization to lengthen your arms in this way. Making it pleasurable for yourself. Mm -hmm. 
easier, simpler each time. Could you bend your other leg and stand your other foot? Your right foot, so both feet are standing. And begin to slide your arms a little leftward and a little rightward, palms turned away from the top of your head. And compare, what do you do when you move towards in the easier direction? If you can, leave your knees pointing towards the ceiling. So now by having both feet standing, you may notice a difference in your ability to roll. So it inhibits a little bit you rolling as much onto your side. So it's asking more through your ribs your shoulder girdle. What differences can you find in yourself in how you move your arms, lengthen them overhead or extend them to the left of you and to the right of you? With your knees bent and your feet standing, can your pelvis still roll? And how does, when you're rolling to the left, Sliding your hands to the left, how does your right shoulder blade, the right side of your chest, leave the floor? And what happens on the left side? And what happens when you go to the right? That's it. Can you think of looking in the direction of your hands? Not, don't have to see them. But notice if that makes a difference. When you think of looking in the direction of your hands, does your head, do you adjust your head, move the vertebra of your neck, and how does that influence your upper ribs and your sternum? Or doesn't it? Okay. Okay. Please bring your arms slowly down. Pause a moment. Sense your contact again. In particular, how you sense your shoulders lying on the floor, your right and your left. Is it your image of how your shoulder blade's lying any clearer now? It may not be in some way that you can identify, but maybe you can identify a difference in the quality of the contact, the shape of the contact, how much contact there is between the back of your right shoulder and the floor and the back of your left shoulder blade and the floor. Gently roll your head a little bit right and left. Is there any difference in the way you roll your head now or what sensations you notice?
bring your right hand onto your abdomen and then slowly slide it up along the front of yourself towards your chin, over your face, and then in the direction of the floor above your head, noticing what, how you involve yourself in that. How does your arm lengthen? What pathway does, do you take? And can you continue your arm upward or outward to the side till you can lie it on the floor? Till the whole of your arm makes contact with the floor and then come back the same pathway and feel how do you lift how do you bring your weight away from the floor? How do you bring the hand to the top of your head? What part of your hand contacts the top of your head first? And how do you pass over your face? Do you lift your hand and do you let it trail? Do you hover your hand and bring it all the way down the front of your chest and slide it to the side until you feel the weight of your arm coming, leaving the support of your body and comes down to the floor. And try the same, explore the same sort of movement with your left hand, left arm. Noticing, do you take a different pathway? How do you feel the weight of this hand in contact with you? And where does your hand find the floor in the realm above your head? And how do you bring it to find the support of the floor? And then come back. So you can sense the changing relationship of your hand with the floor, then with yourself, and also the movements, sensations of movement that are happening, particularly in your shoulder girdle, your clavicle, your shoulder blade, and your upper ribs, and your breathing. And then do both hands together. So coming up onto your abdomen, feeling the weight of your hands or whether you keep your hands, the weight of your arms away from you, how your hands contour to each other, to yourself, over your face, above your head, in the direction of the floor, feeling the pathway of your elbows through space. And then bring your arms back down. Does one arm go ahead of the other? Could you match the, if one arm is quicker or one arm is easier, could you match that arm to the arm that you feel lags or is more difficult and only go that far? And when your arms are above your head, can you let your elbows soften so that you really feel that your arms can rest there, wherever there is for you? It might for some, the arms aren't able to rest above the head. So you need to bring them out to the side somewhere where it's more comfortable to give the weight of your arms to the ground. And then lift your elbows a little bit away from the floor. If you need to bring your hands towards the top of your head and trail them down over yourself. 
down over the more or less the midline of you to your abdomen and then let them slide over your abdomen to the floor beside you. And then next time they're by your side, leave them there. Take a moment just to listen to whatever you're interested in listening to within yourself. And then roll yourself to one side. Bring yourself up to sitting and up to standing. And in standing, take a moment to sense you're standing now, you sense any relationships are a little different, how your arms are hanging, your breathing, how your head is being carried, contact of your feet with the floor, the image of a plumb line can help give you some sense of how you're stacking And what would, yeah, that's okay. And then walk a little and we'll take a 15-minute break. <laughs> 